Welcome back YouTube. This is Dave Lucas with Injection Molding Skills and More. Um, today's video I'm actually going to go over uh, basic steps part two of a molding cycle. So you'll see clamp open, <coughs> inject, um, cooling time, um, you know recovery, and then open up, eject a part off, do the cycle over again but i'm going to break it down and go into more detail on each one and the settings that you can actually change on the press side you know <clears throat> a lot of people don't understand all the different things you can change you know so i'm going to try to break it down a little bit for you so it's a little bit um in more detail um i hope you guys enjoy the video i'll try to do the best i can explaining so um I'm going to set you guys up right here then, I guess. See how this looks. Whoa. Okay. So, the first step, <clears throat> okay, is going to be mold close. So, the mold closes. So, this is the picture of the mold closes. So, it says right here, it says, The injection molding cycle timer begins when the mold closes. Note, in some cases, as with... The use of robots, the cycle runs part to part, which means the cycle begins at the end when the robot receives the new part or <clears throat> the new part touches the conveyor belt, okay? So what I want to do is I'm going to put this right here. Let's see. Let me do this like this. See if you guys can see that any better. So... So, mold close. So, what you could do is you could have uh, close fast. Okay, um, that'll be your first step. So, if you have your, if you have, I'm sorry. So, if you have your thing set up, let's say this is close fast, and you want to close all the way down to a certain position. Then you're going to have close slow. Okay. So close slow would be the next one. And remember you got um, settings in here for speeds. So these are actually speeds and positions. Okay. So what you do is you close fast to a certain point And then you go into mold protect. So this last little bit would be mold protect. So let's say your mold protect. You get it right onto the leader pins. And then you close them up. So let's say this is your mold. These are your leader pins that are sticking out here like this. What you want to do is as soon as you get right close to being on those leader pins, that's when you do your slowdown. Then once you get almost all the way closed, then that's where you start your mold protect. So it might be two inches. It might be three inches. So then you'll have slow down. Then you'll have mold protect. Okay, <clears throat> and then these are the settings that you can change. Like I said, these are speeds and positions. Speed and position. Okay, that's what these would be for this position. Okay, so I don't know where my oh, here it is. Okay, so that's that one. I don't know how this is going to work out, guys. So you just have to bear with me. All right, so then the next one would be um, injection. Step two is injection. So on this one, it says the heated plastic is injected into the mold. As the melt enters the mold, the, the displacement of air escapes through the vents into the injection pins uh, and along the parting line. Runner, gate, and vents design are important. To ensure the mold is filled properly okay so so on this one what you'd have <clears throat> is you're injecting material into it so you have a couple different areas so the first one would be what they call first stage okay and, or some people call it boost or some people call it high time like a high timer okay that'd be your first stage so you're going from there down to fill time 
okay? So your fill time is the distance that this travels to get the second stage. Okay, or pack or hold. Okay, so what's going to happen is <clears throat> this position from here down to your transfer is your fill time. Okay, so this one would fill down until you hit transfer. Okay. And then there's three different transfer positions you can actually do, which is kind of crazy. But let's say you're, you, so fill time would be position, inject until you go to transfer. And then, and then your tr transfer position could be time, position, or pressure. Okay, and the thing is, is you can have all three of these in parallel if you wanted. Okay, however you say it. You can have them in parallel, but the common one that everybody uses is position. So everybody uses position all the time. So, like I said, you have first stage, boost, or high time. It shoots down until it hits transfer. That's your fill time. Then after, he, after it gets the transfer position, then it goes into stage two, pack or hold. You can do gate freeze. You know, test or study or whatever you want to call it to find out what this time would be. And I did a video in this, uh, or a couple weeks ago or a couple months ago, I did a video over gate freeze that will give you the actual pack and hold time that you need for your cycle, okay? Um, so that, that is, that's the second one. That's all the timers you get to change and stuff like that. Like I said, you got speeds and pressures that you adjust in here, okay? So if you, let's say that your first, this one here, let's say it's 1100 PSI, okay? So, and, and it's staying right around 1100, okay? So then what you want to do is your second stage, you want to cut it in half. So this would be 550 is where you'd start out with, or maybe lower for your hold time or hold pressure, okay? So this would be your pressure for stage one. This would be your starting pressure for stage two, okay? It might be lower than that. It just depends on how the part looks, okay? So that's that. Try not to make the video too long, guys. So, bear with me. Okay, so your next step is going to be your cooling. Okay? So, cooling is the next step. It says once the mold is filled, the part can cool for the exact amount of time needed to harden the material. Cooling time is dependent on the types of resin used and the thickness of the part, okay? Um, each mold is designed with internal cooling and heating lines uh, where water is cir circulated through the mold, okay, to evenly balance out the, the temperature, okay? So, this one's going to be pretty easy, okay? So, your cooling time is basically half of your whole complete cycle time. So, if you look at this, you can see this, this is a cycle that runs 35 second cycle. So you got mold close, fill time, pack and hold, then cooling. Look, you see how much have, how much cooling time it takes up? Then it goes into open and eject the part off. Then the cycle starts all over again. So that's what you're that's what you're looking at for cooling time. Okay. So let's do the next step, which is step four on here. So step four is actually the plasticating time, okay? <clears throat> so step four is plastic, plasticizing the resin. While the part cools, the barrel screw retracts and draws plastic resin into the barrel from the material hopper, okay? The heater bands maintain the needed barrel temperature for the type of material that you're running. So on this, you guys got to remember the barrel 
the heater bands that are on there just maintains it. It's actually the rotation of the screw and back pressure, the screw speed and back pressure that actually give you the, the constant melt that you're getting. That's where you're getting your heat from is the friction from that. So the, the settings you can change on here is like, okay, pre decompression. Uh, I just spelled it wrong. So pre decompress. Okay. Your shot size. Okay. Um, your post decompression okay and then you have your screw speed speed and your back pressure okay okay so these are the settings that you can actually do to to create your plasticizing a lot of people call it metering time a lot of people call it screw recovery time. So you want that to be a consistency always. So these are the settings that you can change. And like I said, you're going to have a screw speed, a back pressure, you know, and then your shot size and everything. You, a lot of people don't use pre, you know, unless you got a, you're using almost all the barrel size. Okay. If you, if you're running like a, a, a standard um, runner, He'll use decompression like maybe 0.500. That way you're not drooling out of the nozzle. If you got valve gates, you might use 0.25. That way you're not having all the pressure on the end of the needle, you know, for the next shot. Okay. So <clears throat> let's go to the next one. Okay. So the next one is actually step five is ejection. Okay. So the mold opens. And the ejector rods move the ejectors pins forward. The part falls off and the, the <coughs> is captured in a pin like a bin below the press. Okay. So, but the thing is with this is you can control. Let's say you got this this part here, you can be ejectors with ejector rod, you know, like an ejector knockout bar, a KO bar. Okay, or you have cores that actually knock it off, okay? The other thing is, is let's say you got a robot that goes in there. The robot will go in there and actually grab it and then put it on a, on a thing for you. So you can adjust your speeds and pressures of how far you want that to come out to knock the part off every single time. Or you can adjust your cores. Now, a lot of the cores are on switches. So what happens is, is... It comes to a forward position switch, hits that pancake switch or whatever, and then it only goes that far forward. Then it comes back and goes that far back every single time. You use those whenever you're running like a robot. That way the robot's sequenced with that. Okay? So that's that step. So the last step, okay, in this whole process is <coughs> removing the runners. And the packaging, okay? So what you're going to have is you're going to have, although the injection molding machine cycle ends on step five, the process continues, okay? The machine operator goes in and gets a, the parts out and separates the runners, unless you're using a robot. If you're using a robot, the robot will go in and pick the part and separate the runner that way sometimes. Um, what you can do, though, is on this, you can actually have valve gates and don't have no runner at all it's like a runnerless system so um again this is this is everything so i just wanted to show you that again what happens is you have close the fill pack and hold cooling opens up now everybody says pack and hold are different they're not it's it's the same thing okay guys don't get confused some presses will have pack and hold on them if you take all the pack off and put it in hold, it does the same thing. If you take all the hold off and put it in pack, it does the same thing. It's the same purpose, okay? Some older presses are that way. All your newer presses just have hold on there. They don't say pack on them, okay? So this would be your complete cycle, okay? 
like I said, your cooling. If you figure out by doing a gate freeze on this, you can figure out exactly how much time you can shrink this down and then you can run your cycle a lot faster. Okay guys? So I hope you guys enjoyed that video um, or this lesson. Um, I hope it shows you a little bit about the process as far as you know what things you can change what things you can't change and i hope it helps everybody out um sorry about how i did the video i was trying to do it as i'm going along so you can see me writing it on the board and everything so please like share and subscribe i appreciate all the support to the channel guys peace